We've got two stories today. The first one is... WGA and SAG-AFTRA join labor organizations calling on California to grant unemployment benefits to striking workers. SAG-AFTRA and the Writers Guild of America West are among more than 20 labor organizations lobbying for passage of a bill pending in the California legislature that would make striking workers in the state eligible for unemployment benefits as they are in New York and New Jersey. SAG-AFTRA has now been on strike for 40 days and the WGA for 113. The bill, SB 799, is sponsored by Senators Anthony Portantino and Maria Elena Durazo and Assemblyman Chris Holden, who are looking to fast track it. SB 799 is critical legislation for all working Californians, said Duncan Crabtree Ireland, sag afters National Executive Director and Chief Negotiator. Striking workers deserve the same protections that are afforded to other employees when they are not working. No one wants to go on strike, it's an action of last resort, and workers who find themselves in this position should not be penalized by withholding of state unemployment insurance benefits just because employers refuse to make a fair deal. For nearly four months, the studio's strategy has been to starve writers into accepting a contract that does not fix what the business practices of the studios and streamers have broken, says Meredith Steam, president of WGA West. Years of eroding compensation and working conditions have left writers with fewer resources than ever to weather periods without work. Unemployment insurance for striking workers is a common sense solution to keeping workers afloat and local economies healthy. It is already law in New York and New Jersey, she said, and has been utilized by our union siblings in the Writers Guild of America East. California needs to catch up and meet the demands of the time. We are supporting this legislation so that other workers who need to strike to stand up for their rights can depend on unemployment insurance benefits to help sustain themselves during a work stoppage. Yes, this is all very good. It's been introduced. I don't know the current status on it. Maybe the, this article will go into it. I have not read the article. I just saw the headline and thought we should cover this. In New York, striking workers are eligible to receive up to $504 a week for 26 weeks, while in New Jersey, they can receive up to $830 a week for 26 weeks. Oh, for 26, same, same amount, 26 weeks. But in California and elsewhere, it's zero because state laws there prohibit strikers from receiving unemployment insurance as they're considered to have left their jobs voluntarily. Lorena Gonzalez, executive secretary, uh, treasurer, and chief officer of the California Labor Federation, told Deadline this month that she thinks that's shameful. In 2019, as a member of the California Assembly, she introduced AB 1066, which would have granted unemployment insurance to strikers. Her bill passed the Assembly, but failed in the Senate by two votes. Striking workers have earned their unemployment insurance benefits, she said in a statement Tuesday. They deserve to use them when they are unable to work. We can't have workers economically insecure because they're forced to go out on strike. It harms them and their families and has rippling effects on the entire community. Other labor organizations calling for the change include the California IATSE Council, which is the, um, I don't remember the initial, but that's basically everyone else in the film industry. Like, it's all of your, you know, your, your uh, uh, other, like, workers, like set builders and uh, makeup artists and stuff like that. They're all in IATSE. The VFX guys for Marvel that are voting to unionize are voting to join IATSE. So we've got that. The act Actors' Equity, the California Teamsters Public Affairs Council, the California Labor Federation, the Communication Workers of America, the United Auto Workers, and the California Nurses Association. In a letter to Assembly Speaker Robert uh, Rivas, the union said that workers are going on strike in record numbers despite the hardship to fight for better working conditions, wages, and job security. 11,500 Writers Guild of America members have been on strike since May 2nd. In July, 150,000 members of SAG-AFTRA joined the writers for the first dual strike in the entertainment industry since 1960, shutting down production across the country. These two strikes demonstrate workers' commitments to fighting against company practices that increase worker precarity and threaten the sustainability of the overall industry. Workers have gone on strike in part because of the intransigence of employers to come to fair and reasonable agreements. The entertainment industry employers, represented by the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, have made it clear that they are willing to exploit workers' financial precarity in order to break the strike. The letter notes that the New York State statute that provides for unemployment benefits for strikers was upheld by the U.S. Supreme Court, paving the way for California to pass similar legislation. The unions went on to say that the rights to strike to improve working conditions, wages, and address other issues in collective bargaining is a fundamental worker right that is codified in law for employees in the public and private sector. The decision to go on strike is not one that union members take lightly. Striking workers lose all income for the duration of their job action. Workers deplete their savings as bills pile up, rent and mortgages go unpaid, and debt accumulates. 
Corporations rely on the expectation that striking workers will have few resources, and their strategy is clearly to starve workers until they give up their demands for better wages, fair compensation, and job security. Unemployment insurance is funded through payroll taxes paid by employers. Employers in California pay a percentage of the first $7,000 of workers' wages, one of the lowest wage bases nationally. That means California employers pay taxes on a significantly lower wage amount than employers anywhere else in the country. The tax rate paid on the wage base varies for each employer, depending in part on the amount of unemployment insurance benefits paid to former employees. An employer can qualify for a lower tax rate when fewer claims are made by former employees. The opposition claims that this bill will extend tax increases on all employers, but that is due to the existing unemployment insurance debt caused by the structural insolvency of our system. Unemployment insurance benefits are generally charged to an individual or employer, not the system overall. Employers who do not force workers to go out on strike will not see taxes increase because of this bill. Tax increases will be borne by employers with workers on extended strikes. Okay, I love that part. <laughs> yeah, it's generally for people who don't know, unemployment insurance is almost always paid out first by, you know, the uh, amount that uh, workers had paid into it uh, and then also from their uh, last employer. So, yeah, that that actually would be quite delicious if suddenly we had 150,000 workers in Hollywood getting paid unemployment from the people they're striking against. Ooh, ooh, I like that. I, I want to keep an eye on this bill. Let's let's hope this uh, this goes well. So that was the good news this week, or potentially good news at least. The bad news is this story that came up. Studios offer to writers may lead to AI created scripts that are copyrightable. Copyright law doesn't recognize works solely created by artificial intelligence, but by incentivizing writers to participate in the creation process, studios have a better shot at getting that work protected. Now, I should note the way that this headline and uh, subheadline are phrased. As I have pointed out multiple times on stream, The Hollywood Reporter, as well as Deadline, as well as Variety, are all owned by the same company that is a member of the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, aka the organizations that are being struck against. So the way that this is phrased is kind of on its face neutral, but it's neutral as like studios have a better shot at getting that work protected rather than studios have a better shot at using AI art or AI work to supplant the creative process and just paying writers a pittance to rewrite it. So what's going to happen here? Yeah. In the midst of a double strike that has halted film and TV production, it's becoming slightly clearer how Hollywood's biggest studios would like to build artificial intelligence into the machinery of crafting screenplays. Late on Tuesday, the group that reps studios and streamers, the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, outlined its August 11th proposal to the Writers Guild of America, including how it views generative AI tools like ChatGPT, a bot that can generate log lines, pitch ideas, and storylines in seconds. The AMPTP stressed that writers' use of the tools will not undercut scribes in a sign that it intends to harness the technology instead of outright banning it. Yeah, see, see how this is phrased. This is, seems very, very, very favorable to the AMPTP. But missing from that proposal, which was described as meeting the priority concerns of the guild, is how the studios need writers to exploit any work created by AI under existing copyright laws. That's because works solely created by AI are not copyrightable. To be granted protection, a human would need to rewrite any AI-produced script. And that's that right there. That sounds like a nightmare. Hollywood wants to basically have writers only there, like, Think about it. You just have a, a show that is just, okay, no, it's all just going to be AI generated. Then we'll hire a writer for a day right to go and, and uh, clean it up. And then we can say that a writer wrote it so that it's copyrightable to us, obviously, not to the writer. <laughs> they were just doing work for hire. Fundamentally, the offers mistook who's doing who a favor. John Lopez, a member of the WGA's working group on AI, tells The Hollywood Reporter, they need us. By keeping AI on the table, the studios may be looking to capitalize on the intellectual property rights around works created by the tools. If a human touches material created by generative AI, then the typical copyright protections will kick in, a source close to the AMPTP says. The studios detailed their position to the WGA on the heels of a meeting between Guild leadership and Hollywood CEOs that included Disney chief Bob Iger, Netflix leader Ted Sarandos, and Warner Brothers Discovery mogul David Zaslav, three of the worst people in Hollywood right now. 
It proposed to bar in the contract content generated by AI from being considered literary material defined as stories, adaptations, and screenplays, among other types of works for use in the production of TV and film projects. A writer will not be disadvantaged if any part of the script is based on generated AI-produced material so that the writer's compensation credit and separated rights will not be affected, the offer stated. Yeah, I don't believe that for a second. If it's not affecting them at all, none of these writers wants to use AI. You, you, you talk to them they're like, no, I come up with my own ideas. The reason that Hollywood wants this is so that they can hire fewer writers and the writers that they do hire are just there to punch up the AI scripts. This is one of the big sticking points. This is one of the big reasons why the WGA is so concerned because AI is getting better. And I don't know how good of stories you're ever actually going to get out of AI, but Hollywood certainly seems to think that it's going to be good enough that they can churn out content with it without, you know, actually taking pitches from writers and paying writers their their fair share. Hours after the uh, offer was revealed by the studios, the WGA told members that it failed to sufficiently protect writers and accused members of the AMPTP of leading an effort not to bargain but to jam us. It stressed limitations and loopholes and omissions in the proposal but did not elaborate. The offer marked a compromise on contentious negotiating points relating to AI that appears to be among the issues holding up an end to the strike. The studios may be looking toward producing of AI-generated scripts, but copyright protection is only possible for those works if they are revised by human writers. Material created solely by AI would enter the public domain upon release, potentially restricting opportunities for exploitation. The U.S. Copyright Office currently maintains that most AI-generated works are not copyrightable. In a statement of policy issued in March, it said it's well established that protection can only be granted to works that are the product of human creativity and that authors exclude non-humans. A work containing material produced by AI can only support a copyright if a human selected or arranged it in a sufficiently creative way that the resulting work constitutes an original work of authorship. Courts have long held that copyrights are solely for works by humans. On Friday, a federal judge upheld a finding from the U.S. Copyright Office that a piece of art created by AI is not open to protection. The ruling was issued in a suit from Stephen Thaler, challenging the government's position refusing to register works made by AI. U.S. District, District Judge uh, Beryl Howell found that copyright law has never stretched so far to protect works generated by new forms of technology operating absent any guiding human hand. She stressed human authorship is a bedrock requirement. Pay was highlighted in the AMPTP's counter offer. For example, if writers are given an AI-created screenplay and asked to touch it up, they will receive the fee for a screenplay with no assigned material and not a rewrite. The studios offer to compensate writers as if they're penning original works when they're touching up scripts created by AI could result in a scenario where writers are, in effect, giving these AI-created scripts eligibility for copyright protection. I don't believe them, because if this were the case, if they would be paying them the same to touch up an AI script as they would be to pay them to write an original script, why do they need the AI in the first place? Do, do they think if they do AI, they can have writers crank out more material quicker? Like, no, that's not how that works. They want to cut writers out of intellectual property rights as much as they can, Lopez says. They see AI as a shortcut to do that, but they don't realize they need us. The AMPTP's offer revealed on Tuesday detailed that AI-produced material will not be considered source material for purposes of determining the writer's credit and will not be the basis for disqualifying a writer from eligibility for separated rights. Amid this backdrop, Studios have been fighting legal battles over the rights to iconic franchises birthed in the 1980s, including Top Gun, Predator, Terminator, and Friday the 13th. Writers have been exploiting a provision in copyright law that allows them to recapture previously transferred copyrights after a certain period of time. Studios might be able to avoid this issue altogether by keeping for themselves the intellectual property rights to works created by AI, extending the shelf life and value of lucrative franchises. Depending on how copyright law develops, they may be able to list themselves as the owner of the material under the Work for Hire doctrine, which designates the author of a work as the party that hired the individual rather than the person who actually created it. Here it is. Here is what they're going after. Okay. This will only be possible if human writers sufficiently alter an AI-produced work. The determining factor is the extent to which a person had creative control over the work's expression and actually forms the traditional elements of authorship according to the Copyright Office. A writer, for example, could modify material originally generated by AI to such a degree that it meets the standard for protection. In these instances, only the human-authored aspects of the work will be granted protection. It remains to be seen how the Copyright Office approaches this process. One question is the extent to which a writer has to play in the creative process of penning literary works. 
On top of concerns about intellectual property rights, writers also stress the AMPTP's refusal to bar their work from being used as training data for AI systems. A veteran genre writer says that the two sides may be better off negotiating the topic later so it doesn't tie up the talks. This is an issue where we are negotiating with studios but are also on the same side of studios vis-a-vis -vis companies generating large language models, this writer adds. Well, that writer sounds like they're generally pro-AI is what I would say. And they don't say what the writer is, who the writer is, which makes sense. It's not good, folks. AI is coming for as many jobs as it can, as many jobs as the law will allow it to. And this is one of the big reasons why the Writers Guild is striking, is because they see it coming for them. Honestly, at this point, if you try and generate stories through ChatGPT, what you're going to get is pretty bad. I've tried it several times just out of curiosity. And even when I do it to like, like I've seen people use it to uh, say that, that it's a good a way to like generate like prompts and stuff like that. But even then those prompts, they're never good. Like I, I've tried it. They're just so banal. It's yeah. I don't think it's at a state right now where anything written by AI is going to come across as anything more than just the worst slop. And uh, if you want art, you should use humans because uh, art can't be generated by non-people. Hollywood and PTP, you gotta drop this stuff. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm trying to get my channel monetized, so your view means a lot. Don't forget to toss me a like and subscribe and ring the bell. I stream every Monday and Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific, so catch me live and join in on the convo. You can find all my socials in the description below, and thank you to all my patrons with a special shout out to Piftle Cakes and Ryan D. Your support means the world. Catch you next time.